So uh, thank you for the invitation. So the title of my presentation is uh, Varieties of Sameness in Homotopy Type Theory. So I'll first explain uh, the basics of uh, what uh, type theory and dependent type theory in particular is. And then I'll explain what uh, the homotopical interpretation of that means. And after that, I'll uh, explain different notions of sameness in that uh, in homotopy type theory. So first of all, uh, so homotopy type theory is based on Mar Martin Love's uh, idea of dependent type theory, which is an alternative to first order logic. And uh, in contrast to uh, set theory, in type theory, every element is uh, uniquely equipped with a type. So we have an expression A small colon uh, A capital, which means that A is a term of type A uh, capital. So, and the main idea behind dependent type theory is that we can form dependent types. So one can informally understand uh, a dependent type as a type that varies uh, across or over the base type, for example, like here. So for example, we have an expression that says in a context gamma, we have a type A and we have a dependent type B of A. And type here means that it is a well-formed type. So one can construct such a type and it will, uh, the value of it will be uh, uh, dependent on a term from the base uh, type. So now uh, the idea behind uh, homotopy type theory is that this is an interpretation in both formal and informal sense on, of Martin Love's dependent type theory. But before that, I want to uh, continue with the basic idea here that uh, in Martin Love's type theory, we can distinguish between propositions uh, and judgments. So judgments are certain declarations of uh, certain uh, or of certain expressions. So for example, A of type A uh, capital is a judgment. And uh, for example, the one Bewall says that two types A and B are judgmentally equal. So judgmental equality is denoted like this with the dot uh, under the, um, the equality sign. So this says that two types are judgmentally equal. And judgmental equality forms an equivalence relation on types and terms. So for example, here we can see that it is reflective, it is uh, symmetric and uh, transitive. But the main idea here is that a judgmental equality, it, it is not a proposition. Uh, and uh, if a proposition has a proof, then with uh, judgments, they're just uh, declared, they're asserted, so there is no proof of a, uh, of a judgment in that sense. So for example, uh, uh, now to the types. So for example, if one introduces a type uh, in the spirit of this constructive uh, framework of uh, mathematics under which uh, Martin Love developed dependent type theory, uh, in order to introduce a type, one must show two things. The first one is that how to construct the element of the type. And the second one is to show that two elements, uh, how to show that two elements of a given type are equal. And uh, this is, means that uh, one needs to characterize its uh, identity type. So for example, if we, if we take the type of dependent functions, which is uh, essentially, it, it is like ordinary mathematical functions, but they're dependent, meaning, uh, the uh, function sends x not to some other uh, value but to b uh, independent value but to uh, b of x and uh, this means that b depends on x so uh, here we can see that this is b uh, small of x is a term of that dependent type so uh, in that sense we have the type of dependent functions and for example uh, here we have the uh, formation rule which says that given in a context of gamma and type A, of which X as a term, we can say we can form a well-formed type B of X. Uh, 
and after that we can form the dependent uh, function type so uh, another part of uh, introducing types is uh, for example introduction rule which says that given uh, a term a of type a we can uh, we have uh, and uh, in, in I mean in a context a uh, in, in a context uh, of term a of type a and uh, we have uh, b of a small which is a term or one can say an element of the dependent type we can form a lambda term which is just a dependent function so for example uh, this and uh, the other part is that so um, all types must uh, respect the judgmental equality so this is uh, these are the uh, rules that state that so now uh, to the a bit uh, philosophical part here so homotopy type theory is proof relevant and proofs uh, play in the, an important uh, uh, role here because uh, there is this uh, idea uh, the carry forward correspondence that we can consider propositions as types like usually usual mathematical propositions for example if something is uh, equal to something else so uh, and there is another idea uh, which uh, which is related here so it's the step that a term of a type can be considered as a proof of that type or uh, if we consider this type as a proposition then for example expression a term t of type p says that there is a proof t of a proposition p so this is uh, very important here so and for example if there are several ways to prove uh, the proposition p then there will be more than one element of that type p and uh, if there is again different elements of the type uh, we can say that they're the same in the sense that we can form an identity type so identity type essentially has three arguments the base type in which the situation takes place in this case p and two terms for example t and v and this whole thing is also a type so uh, the important part here is we say that they uh, form an identity type but they're not necessarily judgmentally equal so again judgmental equality is uh, more on a syntactical or uh, level or it is more like a usual definitional definitional equality so for example one uh, can uh, for, for, for example we have the type of natural numbers of which there are two constructors the zero and the successor uh, function right so for example uh, s of zero will be one so for example if we have an uh, addition operation of that type which takes two arguments and uh, outputs another argument of the uh, another term of natural numbers uh, which is defined by th these two rules which basically correspond to the usual addition operation right one can prove that uh, for two terms n and m of the natural numbers there is an identity type between n plus m and m plus n but that uh, but one can say that this automatically means that they are judgmentally equal so this is uh, so this uh, uh, this is not the same thing right so we have already two notions of uh, we have the notion of identity which is a type and which is a proposition which is the uh, part of the uh, part of the object uh, language and there is judgmental equality which is uh, on the syntactical side uh, or part of the uh, like meta language here so in that sense we have identity types which are again denoted like this or like this and uh, so uh, again any type has uh, what what is uh, usually says like term constructors or uh, uh, canonical generators and for identity type there is only one uh, term constructor which is reflexivity so reflexivity is of type for uh, the type a and uh, for example a term uh, of the type a small we have the type of uh, a being 
identical to itself, and we have a proof that this is indeed true, the term reflexivity. So this, this is uh, pretty straightforward. So essentially, reflexivity says that every term is identical to itself. So, for example, um, we can form the uh, family of identity types over A, uh, which will depend on both A and B, and we can have, for example, two terms of that uh, type, uh, which will correspond to two different proofs of the proposition that states that A and B are equal. And again, this can be thought of, or they, I mean, the identity type between, between A and B is essentially, uh, it just says that A and B are equal, right? And P and Q are proofs of that. So in that sense, and uh, which is uh, was considered a rather useless thing in Martin Love type theory, is that given these two terms of uh, proofs, right? Uh, given these two proofs that A and B are equal, we can consider the identity type of these proofs. For example, the identity type that P is identical to the reflexivity of A. So uh, again, uh, a very important thing here that P and REFL A, they can be propositionally equal, meaning there, there is a, a, the identity type, which uh, has some terms, but they're not necessarily judgment, judgmentally equal. So the only identification that is uh, guaranteed to exist are the trivial self-identification reflexivity. And again, this is the only constructor of the identity type. And um, uh, this is a pretty trivial construction if it is considered like that. So for example, um, I will get to that later, uh, but uh, for example, in this case, uh, um, that the fact that identity types are not just types, but they're inductive families of types, uh, we can define the induction principle or path induction for uh, the identity type, which is a very important thing in uh, type theory. And this is not the homotopical part yet. So for example, uh, for a fixed point, of uh, or term of uh, type A, we can say that given given this uh, term, right, and given, for example, proof that A is equal to some other term X, we can form a essentially a predicate or a dependent type on the proof and uh, to we uh, and the term to which A is equal, and uh, there is a function which sends this um, predicate on A and reflexivity of A. So the proof that A is equal to itself and A to this uh, dependent function type, which can be read as for all X of A and for all proofs of that the term A is equal to the term X, there is this uh, predicate P of X and P small. So essentially, it means that in order to prove that this is true, right? So in order to prove that there is a dependent type of X and P, it only suffices to say that this uh, predicate holds on A and reflexivity of A. So it essentially says that if you want to say that, for example, two terms of the same type are equal and you have this proof, you can just show that this is true, uh, that this uh, dependent type uh, is, uh, that there is uh, this, you can show that uh, some construction is true for A and ref of A, and we have a function which sends the proof of this to this. So in that sense, we have two notions of uh, sameness in uh, homotopy type theory. And the first one is extensional, uh, and the second one is intentional. So the judgmental equality is intentional in the sense that is, again, it's definitional or syntactical. And the identity type is extensional in the sense that, uh, as I write here, it, uh, a, a concept is extensional if it does not distinguish between objects 
that have the same observable behavior or extension. So the identity type is extensional. This is an important thing. And judgmental equality is intentional. So of course, the, this, these concepts are also some uh, go, go back to Frege. I mean, the, this uh, distinction. So in now what I call intentional type theory, we have this rule that says that uh, oh, sorry, I use here another uh, symbol for judgmental equality. So if X and uh, Y are judgmentally equal, then uh, it, it entails uh, the identity type between them. This is, uh, so if they're judgmentally equal, then there is a proposition uh, which corresponds to that. In extensional type theory, there is uh, a, a rule which, the, which says uh, the contrary. So if there is a proof that X is equal to Y, meaning there is a, a term of the identity type, then they're judgmentally equal. So we go from here, we go from identity type to judgmental equality. And in intentional type theory, we go from uh, judgmental equality to the identity type. And the interesting part is that now I will, uh, uh, not, now there is this idea of uh, homotopy equivalence. So if they, this, uh, which is called equality reflection rule, holds, then uh, all of the higher groupoid structure of identity type collapses. So what that means, I will explain. But for example, uh, just to give an example, equality in set theory is a proposition and it is uh, proof irrelevant. So uh, in a sense, uh, in homotopy type theory, the, the structure of identity type, uh, it, has, it can, has, uh, can have uh, non-trivial constructors besides reflexivity. And if we work with the extensional type theory, then all the non-trivial, uh, sorry, non-trivial terms of identity type, uh, of the identity type collapse to the uh, reflection, uh, to raffle of whatever. So the homotopic interpretation says that uh, types can be considered as uh, spaces. And uh, this, this is, of course, informal. So uh, in terms of types are points in a given space. So what are identity types then? They're path spaces, meaning, for example, for two terms, A and B, there is a path of, there is a path, right, from, from A to B. Uh, which is denoted P, and there is another one which is denoted uh, Q. So they all um, are terms of the identity type between A and B. And for example, if we can continually deform one path into another, for example, alpha, then there is a term of the identity type of the identity type. Now, uh, this homotopical interpretation uh, concerns primarily uh, this identity type in the, uh, the, the identity types in, in the sense that, for example, uh, if A is just a set, then its identity type is a proposition and uh, propositions are contractible, meaning that they ho have at most one term. So what does it mean that uh, some type has at most one term? So, for example, take this proposition to be the identity type. Right, then it means that it is contractible, meaning it has only one term, reflexivity. But with the homotopical interpretation, we can have more than one term of the identity type. I mean, non-trivial term, which what this means, I'll try to ex explain in a minute. So again, there is this idea. And uh, again, the term of the identity type between two terms can be interpreted as a continuous path from the point X to Y in the space, meaning in the type A. And uh, again, there is this idea of uh, homotopy, which is a continuous deformation between two paths. So in uh, this homotopical interpretation, every statement is invariant under homotopy equivalence, which uh, again can be seen that uh, homotopies are somehow again, informally related to, in, in how I explain this here, uh, to the notion of identity uh, in homotopy theory. Uh, and uh, in, again, in homotopy theory, we have this uh, homotopy invariance. So 
now to the uh, idea behind this homotopical interpretation uh, in regards to the identity type. So uh, in uh, Martin Love type theory, right, we have proofs of identities of identities of identities. And this corresponds to this idea uh, that I um, presented before that we can form these paths between paths, between paths, etc. And um, so this is, for example, right? So th this is the homotopical intuition behind the identity types of identity types and uh, again, proofs of them, etc. And uh, this is, again, why the, there is this uh, homotopy invariance is because a homotopy type, it is an equivalence class of spaces. And uh, again, what, uh, the, the thing here is an uh, infinity groupoid, which is called an infinity groupoid. So identity types are uh, infinity groupoids. And uh, we have these higher identity proofs. So what, what uh, homotopy interpretation, homotopical interpretation allows us to do is to um, uh, construct this intricate uh, many level, many intricate this many levels of uh, again paths between paths between paths. And if you consider the extensional type theory, then all this higher uh, higher order structure collapses to the usual uh, to the usual uh, notion of identity in, uh, for example, in set theory. I'll, I think I have, uh, right, I have maybe two minutes, so I'll try to explain that. So again, for example, uh, if we have, uh, there is another thing, which is called uniqueness of identity proofs, which is directly related to this interpretation. So for example, it, it states that for two proofs of equality of uh, identity type, they're judgmentally equal, or it can, it can be formulated in this way which is uh, the same thing that for a proof of the identity type, it is judgmentally equal to the reflexivity. And again, this is the, uh, this thing holds in the extensional type theory. And what it does, it's, it uh, collapses all the non-trivial proofs of the identity to this uh, reflexivity term. And what univalence axiom does, which is the main uh, thing in the, this, uh, in univalent foundations uh, and uh, homotopy type theory, it requires the existence of non-trivial identity proofs. So I'll try to explain this uh, very fast. So for example, if we have uh, a type uh, in, the, in, in the universe, right? And we have a path from this type to itself, one can show that uh, P, the proof of this type being uh, equal to itself is not equal to the reflexivity with the use of the uh, univalence axiom. Uh, so, for example, if we take, uh, I think I don't have enough time, uh, time, so maybe I'll just skip that and go to straight to the axiom. So uh, the axiom says that the identity type between two types in a universe uh, is homotopically so uh, equivalent or one can logically read this as uh, isomorphic to the isomorphisms between to all the isomorphisms between a, a and b so for example if we have the identity type then and what is a uh, uh, isomorphism right it's maps from uh, the left part to the right and uh, back so uh, in this sense if we have the identity type we can obtain the uh, isomorphisms between them. And on the contrary, if we have this uh, equivalence, uh, we can obtain the identity type. So uh, there is, of course, there are some technical details on the direction here, but uh, logically, this can be read that isomorphic structures can be identified. This is the formulation of uh, Steve Avedi. So. Now uh, to the part here concerning, uh, again, uh, uh, the univalence axiom, if every statement must respect propositional equality, which is the identity type, then the univalence axiom says that the language cannot distinguish between equivalent types. So in that sense, so uh, again, uh, informally type identification is, the, is equivalent to equivalence between types. And in intentional type theory, for example, we have the, so uh, again, this homotopical interpretation, we have the univalence axiom. 
and essentially it allows us to produce more elements of the identity types, so non-trivial terms. And without the univalence axiom, reflexivity is the only given way to construct elements of the identity type. So in uh, again, uh, so if we have, for example, uniqueness of identity proofs, which I stated before, we cannot form a non-trivial elements of the identity type, meaning we cannot produce non-trivial proofs that, for example, uh, two types are uh, the same. And all this homotopical interpretation, it is uh, kind of, uh, it, it has uh, meaning only with the univalence axiom, because again, there is no, uh, this identity, uh, identity types of identity types, uh, et cetera, et cetera. They just all collapse to the first level if one has the uniqueness of identity proofs in the system or a quality reflection rule, which are also related. So yeah, the, the basic idea in the homotopical interpretation is that we can pass from identity to equivalence or back. And instead of working with objects up to identity, we can work with the objects up to equivalence, which is a weaker notion. And uh, so we can distinguish, uh, in a sense, uh, uh, with the uh, univalence axiom, uh, another, we can essentially consider another type of uh, much weaker uh, maps, and we can uh, obtain a weaker notion of uh, uh, identity or uh, of sameness. So in, in that sense, we have the usual uh, notion of identity, and we have this uh, much weaker notion of homotopy equivalence, which is uh, which formalized in the univalence axiom. And this is the main uh, contribution of this homotopical interpretation. So, yeah, I, I think I don't have the time to uh, explain this slide, but this is ex uh, essentially the main point behind the homotopical interpretation is that we have objects up to equivalence instead of up to identity. So if you have any uh, question, questions, I will be glad to answer them. Uh, Arnold, thank you so much. Are there any questions? Oh, I guess there are no questions. Okay. Again, thank you.